Um, has anyone caught more than, say, five squid in a session? Oh, Grant, well, you should be out the front anyway. <laughs> um, so, guys, um, at the moment, I'll tell you about squid. Squid's the fastest growing, biggest biomass of any animal on this planet. More than people, believe it or not. There's more squid in the, in the, in the world than there are people in volume. Um, they, grow, they live for about a year to 18 months. That's their life cycle from that to big, okay? They're very fast growing, faster than dolphin fish, faster than anything, so, and prawns or anything. So um, when you get and you catch a lot of squid, don't be scared you're going to um, cut down the population because they just keep coming back. And I think around the world, they're one, one species that's not declining at all, if anything, they're in, increasing. So um, that's a good thing for, for all of us. Um, the arrow squid are probably the most populous squid in the world. So the ones you see overseas in Thailand and all over the joint with those big like, conveyor belt squid jigs that go down and pull up and they've got 100 squid on each one, each drop. They're all the same arrow squids we catch here, okay? Um, they're delicious to eat, as are the other squid too. But um, so I'll tell you about it. So we're gonna get on with, um, first up with the um, calamari squid. So calamari squid are a lot chunkier. Their heads are quite big, like a big one's like my fist size. Two big green eyes, very big green eyes. That's the difference, green eye versus I think the other ones are black or, or silvery black. Um, the arrow squid's quite long and the um, other one's quite chunky, like I said. The arrow squid pull a little bit, but the calamari squid, the bigger ones, they go hard. I actually got one up at um, Bulwar Rex up at Morton once and it nearly spilled me, but I was around about three kilos. It was actually a monster, like a real big one. Um, so, so I was a uh, tuner on, but anyway, I didn't want to had on actually until the squid came up. Um, just went that fast. Um, but down the Gold Coast, we used to get a lot at times, like some years you get heaps and some years you get nothing. And last year we didn't get much at all. Um, the year before that wasn't too bad. And I'm thinking this year it's very cold. The water's dropped five degrees in last week. So I'm guessing it's going to be a fairly good season because it's very cold very early. Um, there are squid that you can catch off the, off the shoreline really easy as well when they're around. There's, how many people here don't have a boat? Okay, a few of you don't. Okay, so that's okay. So for you guys and for everyone else too, by the way, um, they're a, a squid that likes cover. So they like rock walls, they like jetties, they like bridges, and they like lights on jetties and bridges. Um, and uh, structure as well, sometimes trees that are in the deep water or grass, uh, seaweed, seaweed beds, of course. And um, we have a really good um, uh, area here for them with the broadwaters. The seaway, the seaway is like the perfect scenario. So um, I've caught most of my calamari squid actually shore based than, rather than a boat. Just to let you know that too. Um, the seaway used to be the spot where I do go sometimes, but I used to do a lot there um, years ago with my brother. Um, and you're working from the seaway wall around to where the wall comes into the broadwater and facing back towards Labrador sort of way. So that's the go, okay? Mass has to be high tide though, and there are, and it doesn't matter if in the boat chasing them or um, off the shoreline, it has to be high tide, first two hours to run out. That's the prime time. You wanna get them, once the water goes dirty, they just, I don't know where they go, they just disappear. Um, the only time I found them in dirty or semi-dirty water is in an eddy, um, a section of wave break, a couple of times where the water sort of eddies and there's no current and they'll all dump in there. They can obviously come down the current, then they sit in there. And I've plucked out 20 of them, you know, big ones, middle of the day. So um, at this time of year, from early May to probably August, um, I always have a squid jig rigged up on my boat. So if I'm flathead fishing, you get a lot of big calamari squid when you're flathead fishing too. So whether it be shoreline based and you got casting out weed beds for flatties, or if you're in a boat, casting weed beds for flatties, <coughs> Um, you'll quite often see big squids. You've seen them, Stewie. Yeah. And you've pulled any up at all? Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Like they just grab your plastic or they follow mm. a fish in. Or, and they're yeah. huge. Or, they're always big they're ones. They're always pretty big ones. Yeah. So as soon as you see that, if you can get old mate to hold his squid jig there and all you grab another rod and throw straight at it, um, the chances are 90% it's going to grab your squid jig. Okay. The trouble is when you're squidding in shallow water like that, so a metre deep, you don't want to like a three and a half or even a three on because it just sinks too quick. It's got to be really slow sinking. The slower it is sinking, the more they're going to easily grab it. If you do, um, if it does sink quite quickly, you've got a big squid jig on, that's all you got. You'll need to, just, as soon as it's the water, you'll need to slowly start winding it straight away. And hopefully it'll come up to it. 
Um, as soon as you see it come up to it at that point, you need to stop and just let it sink and take the chance it doesn't get caught in the weed. And he should grab it when it sinks, as soon as it sinks. You can see them, they've got their, their, their main candle um, grabbers are tucked in. And you'll see just the head like that. And they'll come right to the squid jig. And as soon as that jig, as soon as like you're one, you stop, you see it. There's a visually see the pair of polarized on. And as soon as you stop and let it sink, those long ones just lash out and, and hook onto it. That's how it works. When you get a big one on though, you need to actually set that hook a little bit. You know those super sharp squid jigs? You need to get the hooking so quite heavy. Okay, and if they sort of pull or, or thrust around, it can come off, believe it or not. So you need to, I actually like set the hook good. Okay. Um, there, another thing too, with the, they do lash out with their candles and um, and you get hooked on that part of the jig, and when you get them in, you see that, and they see the body a long way away from your squid jig, and it's quite a big squid, you can't take the chance of lifting it up rocks or something, because they'll snap off. They fill up with water, and they're like a kilo or a kilo and a half, maybe a good size one, maybe two kilos, with the water inside. And um, they may also incubate. <laughs> but um, if you try and lift them up, it, it snaps. I've had many snap off over time, so now we try and net them, or I'll just try and drag it up, or I can sort of grab it if I have to. If you're going to grab it, grab it behind the head, because he'll try and grab you and bite you, okay? Yeah. Um, any questions on that at all? Okay. So, um, nighttime versus daytime. If you're going to fish structure like um, jetties, uh, boat ramps, and bridges, um, I'd definitely say do it only at nighttime. I, I've caught a few during the day at, at those jetties at certain times, but. Uh, night times to go, they, they hang around the bait, they sit just outside the light. Has anyone ever been up the reef and fished a squid off the back of charter boats or something? Probably, maybe you haven't, but the squid are always on the outside. You can't see them. Occasionally they'll come in and, and grab a bait fish and that's when you see them and you know they're there. But if you don't take note of that, uh, um, you'll never know they're there. So you throw your squid jig always to the edge of the light or just beyond it and let it sink down. And as soon as you start winding that they obviously down deep and they'll grab your squid jig. Okay, so the idea is to, um, uh, if you know it's going to be weedy bottom and it's night time, it's really hard to let it sink down and then lift it back up again and work it a bit because it tends to get caught in the weed a bit. So you really got to um, understand the sink rate of your lure, let it sink but don't let it get caught in the weed because once you get a bit of weed on the hook, it's all over, all over one. they'll just swim away if you've got their attention. They don't like it. They'll come out and have a look and they'll just swim away. So you can't have weed on your hooks daytime as well. Mm. Yeah, definitely. What do they uh, normally eat? Uh, they eat just bait fish. Normally bait fish. But they eat each other too. <laughs> They're very, very aggressive, especially the arrow squid. The arrow squid is just off the Richter scale. They're in a bait tank and they'll eat each other. Mm. Bad. Or you get one on, leave it on. If you, I'll talk about, talk about them later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, calamari squid aren't as bad. They're not as aggressive. Okay. Um, and the calamari squid, um, da, yeah, it's high tide uh, lights and that. And if you are in a boat fishing, so land base, you got it easy. It's actually easy to catch them at night. I got the pump and jet off the yard. Uh, you can get off the pump and jet too, by the way. Um, but definitely off um, like the Grand area from the Grand Hotel boat ramp, actually in front of Charles Sea, where the pop is all the way around to pretty well um, the second main jetty uh, after aqua building. So all on the front there, okay? But it needs to be high tide, say at 7, 8, 9 or 10 o'clock at night, depends how late you want to go. Be there half hour before high tide and fish the high tide and the first two hours of the run out. As the tide starts running out, I do find they tend to go, the ones that are at the front there tend to go down around to where sort of the, the road curves just before the, um, the boat ramp at the Grand with the point curves there. And there's an eddy there next to the jetty, the pontoon jetty. Um, and they'll sort of come along and the bait gets in there and they'll sit in that in the eddy there. They like eddies, okay? But once the eddy gets dirty, they're out of there. They're gone. Um, bridges at night time, say around the, the Sundial Bridge or Talabudge or wherever it might be, um, wherever the can cast outside the light spectrum and then bring it back into the light, add it down a bit. And, and always try and visually see it. And they're so translucent, so it's really hard to see, especially on a moon night. You hardly see them at all. You just maybe see a little shadow, maybe. Um, but some nights they're, they're very easy to see. You see them quite easily. Yeah. 
um, what else can I tell you about those off land base? Uh, if you were down at, say, the Baby Harbour, um, sometimes they're also riding along the edge of the rocks. And the same on, on the seaway too. Sometimes they're out on the drop off of the rocks and sometimes they're right at your feet, at, at, right at the rocks. So you'll get nothing and you might do a cast down along the, the edge of the wall sort of thing, very shallow, and just slowly wind so it doesn't get caught on the bottom and you'll get one on. And sometimes they're stacked up, feeding on the bait up against the rocks. So you need to diverse your casting, whether it be out there or down that way. Okay. Any questions on that at all? What about up north, jumping pin? Yeah, jumping pin way. So um, I have caught a few around Pandanus Island and that little channel around Pandanus at times. That's really good there, actually. Um, Whatever else I caught them up there. Um, I've caught a few up towards um, where the Slipping Sands are. That back channel that runs out on the edge of the bank there from the Slipping Sands up to Russell sort of thing. Just in that little drain there. I caught them there as well. But not not big heat. So, but the guys get them off the jetty at, at the Jack as well there too. Yeah, at yeah, night. There, right? yeah it's good. It's good. Um, but if you've got a boat and you're that close, I'd be definitely going like Morton Bay is just... It's so good at the moment, like, you've got to go to Morton Bay. <laughs> I know it's a long run. If your boat's trailable, I'd probably take it up to... Um, long way to go to Yeah, long way to go, yeah. <laughs> I'll eat them, but... <laughs> yeah, but um, Vicky Point or Cleveland or Manly, wherever, and, and shoot across to the banks. Does anyone go up to Morton Bay here? Mm. Yeah, okay, Phoebe, do good. Because that is the home of the, of the Calamari. It's good. I've got a couple of my mates that have just been absolutely braining it mm. the last couple of weekends. Last Saturday was just crazy. Like, like they got like 30 monsters, you know, in no time. And um, yeah, it filled, filled like a big esky full. And, sorry? Yeah, it's actually, no, um, one of the guys was working from, sorry if you're listening, mate, <laughs> sorry, from um, uh, just south of Tangaluma along the drop off. So it's like three metres drops down at <coughs> like six or eight. Along that drop off, there's a few weed patches there as well, all the way down to um, Lucinda or Shark Spit there, where the sand hills are. So all the way along that edge, they got eight k's or six k's edge there to work. Didn't matter where they pulled up; they were just there everywhere. Um, see myself, I, I really like um, opposite uh, between Myora and Little Ships. That Dunnage is a really good area, um, if you know that area. And along there's a green zone there, so just don't go in the green zone at the front of that bank. But if you come into where the channel comes into Little Ships at Dunwich there, right along the entrance there, amongst all the boats, pretty on the on the eastern side of the channel though. Um, heaps, heaps and heaps there. And the banks opposite there, switch out for green zone again, there's a lot of green zones. Um, but that area is really good opposite, um, straight across from Moira. Um, is there a limit to? 30 squid, I think it is. Is it? I think it's 30 squid per person. Yep. And um, just to let you know, there's an app you can get called um, Fishing 2.0. It's a, an app put out from the Queensland Fisheries and it's a really good app. It, it has green zones in it everywhere and you can push the little, the little um, blue button on it and it tells you exactly where you are. So it'll show you if you're in the green zone. Okay, and if you're worried about reception, um, it also has, it works off satellite like a, like a, a Navionics app or something. So it doesn't need um, data to make it work. It will work off satellite, just go, it converts across and it'll still show you where you are. <laughs> out in the middle of the Pacific, okay? So put it on your phones if you can, it's free, it's fishing 2.0. Um, but Morton Bay, yeah, great place, really good spot. Yes, David. Are canals too dirty? Canals are, um, that's a good question. Like, I, I live up Renault Bay and, and I've had big ones swim around my pontoon at night sometimes, um, but rarely. They, they, they sort of, I think that's too much of a hunting ground for Sharks and mangrove jacks, <laughs> safer them out, out in the open sort of thing. So they don't tend to go where they know they're going to get cold by their predators so much. Okay, so they're more, the, they, want to be the, they want to be the predator that don't, in their domain, if that makes sense. So where the little bait fish are, that's where they are. And if there's not too much other big fish in the area, they'll stay there. But that's why in the seaway, you don't get the arrow squid um, say from out here the seaway from uh say the air sea rescue base that's the main channel from there all the way to about probably um uh, Pandan oh, not Pandanus, um north side 
Yeah, Perry's just, Banks, yeah. yeah, Perry's Banks area or the old deep hole years ago, Rano Bay sort of area. In that stretch between the seaway, you will not catch squid, arrow squid in the channel on the eastern side. There's too many predators, there's too many sharks, there's too many jewies, whatever there might be there. They don't like it. You get the big calamari, I, don't, I think they're a bit more tougher or maybe more better at hiding, whatever they do. So they're, they're, they don't really care, they'll get up on the edge of the wall on that where the jewies feed at night time. Um, so you actually hear the jew chopper and then dolphins <coughs> thrashing around while you're catching squid. I don't know, they're tough. But the arrow squid, they like um, they like a bit of quietness. Yeah. So canals, no, not that much. Wouldn't waste my time too much. Yeah. Um, Brisbane, if you have Brisbane, I think they get them off the seaport up there, um, off the jetties and that up around there, and they get off the Shawncliff Pier as well. It's a really good spot at Shawncliff. I dare say you get it manly, but I don't think you can fish the manly jetty or not. I'd mainly uh, rock wall there. I don't know if you're allowed to fish there or not. Um, but anyhow, um, getting back to the gear that we, I'll just show you the gear we use as well. Uh, right behind you there, Stewie. So um, if you look at traditionals, they call them Cephia rods or squid rods that um, Shimano and Dyer and the other guys make, they're not made for Australia, guys. They're made for Japan or Taiwan and that, where they're casting off the rocks and they're casting across kelp beds, maybe a long cast, like 60 or 80 metres, and they're using like P1 or 2. They're using like 30 pound braid. And they tend to use a bigger squid jig, 3 or 3.5 or 4. Very different to us. We want to use a 2.5 or a 3 most of the time, and we want a really light tip rod. And um, they're catching like huge tiger squid or calamari squid where we're catching smaller. So um, we do have those rods downstairs, and they are making them a little bit lighter now. They're sort of like a bit Aussie style, but they're too heavy still, okay? Um, and so you want a rod that's real light tip, so when they pull, it, there's no chance of that candle or whatever snapping off. So the rod gives, and then you get them in, obviously. And fish are really light drag. My drag's very light, okay, when I'm fishing for them. And when you see it on YouTube, that work, you'll see the drag's always moving, and the squid's only that big. But you never lose them, okay? They never snap off, you never lose one. Um, Leader-wise, I'm running about 12-pound line, a 12-pound fluorocarbon, which I think you got in the bag. That's my favourite go-to, which is this little fella here. Okay. Um, and real size, if you think around two and a half thousand, any of your flatty reels are fine, or brim and whiting reels, two to two and a half thousand, that's fine. And I said rod um, around that sort of six and a half to eight foot, but uh, or seven foot six, whatever's really good. Um, that's the deal we've got going tonight, which I'll tell you about when we finish tonight. And up spec in a bit, this is probably as much as you want to go. Um, that's again, that's seven four, I think, but it's a little bit heavy, but still a nice light tip. So plenty of go on it, um, if you can see that way, maybe. It's a bit easy for you to see. It needs to be soft so that they can pull and not, not break off their legs. And again, light drag, and a nice smooth drag is really important as well. Braid-wise, um, anywhere six to ten pounds to go. Okay. Um, if you've got a really thin 15, which I use for flatties and still use for flatties, we use that for squid too, because it's only about eight pound diameter, so it's fine as well. Um, and leader-wise, uh, probably about a metre's enough. Okay. Um, these are my rods, a couple of rods I use here. These are all seven foot, rigged up from last squid, squid trip. Um, I've just been playing around with running two squid jigs, and especially for the calamari squid, which we're talking about right now. Um, and because for, with all the squid, I run a second rod if I'm out of the boat. It's a bit hard for shore base, sorry guys, but from the boat, um, I run a second rod um, just drifting. And at once I was over on the north side of wave break on the run out tide. So at night time, it's a real good spot there. Um, the, when the calamari squid come in. So where the north wall is and the way break, and where they dive, where the dive boat pulls up there, and you see them all the time when they dive in that area, that's where the squid are too, when they come on. And, uh, and I've had some monster sessions there, um, where the whole boat's just black, but had a good fat time. So do, you, do you mean on the inside edge? <laughs> yeah, inside, the inside, inside. Oh, I get them on both sides, believe it or not, but on, on the run out on the inside edge, right, of the north wall. And on the south wall, it depends on the wind. If the wind's blowing from the south, it's a, you can't do it. It's just too choppy in there and too hard. Um, it's got to be... The, the squid love no wind. That's the big secret too, guys. No wind is squid's friend and our friend. So 
um, if there's no no wind and they've got that tide, at this time of year you just have to go squidding. You can't, don't forget about put the blinkers on very other species and go squidding because <laughs> that's the night you're going to catch them, okay? Uh, but I've been running like two squid jigs like this um, and I've been getting them both top and bottom but more on that one because I'm I run a bigger size on the middle and a little one at the back here. And it's just a heavier one, so a lighter one. And I'm guessing when it's dragging along, that's dragging and that's actually up in the air a little bit. Or just sitting um, sort of just above the bottom. So most of the squid have been on that, on that one. But if you want to try something different, because you need to get a bit of weight down. And the problem is um, if you don't have the weight, it's always sort of mid-water or up too high, not in their zone. Because they're up high, but they go down to attack. They rarely attack the surface squid, unless you've got them really thick. Mm. Yeah, they, they like about a metre. If you're in, say, three metres of water, they like about a metre down. Okay, Minimum, or two metres or three metres. So just try that next time. But I'm trying to work out a system to get um, this guy to sort of float up a bit more. So I'm going to try, and I'll, I'll show you on YouTube when I, when I work out how to do it using a float system sitting just above it to, to lift it off the bottom a bit more, does that make sense? But there's enough weight there to keep both the lures down. So I'm going to work on that one somehow. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, you just use a single one casting. So the action for the um, calamari squid, Thanks, Jake. Um, I tend to do a lot of different actions um, oh, actually, just go back to the flow system. I was going back to what I was saying about that north of wave break one, north side of wave break there one time. Um, yeah, I see down south they use a lot of floats. They just run a, and they do it off the jetties too if you're land based. They run a float and they just hang a squid about, a squid jig about a metre below it and toss it out and just let it sit there. And they have a little silent stick on it and they see it bob or pull under. They know they've got a squid on. And I thought, I'm going to try this float system. I didn't have the light on though, I just put a, a, a clip on float. I threw it out, and then I threw my squid jig out and started with my squid jig. And next thing I hear the drag going, eh, eh. <laughs> and, I, and that one had a monster squid on it as I pulled it in. This one got sitting on the bottom, and I actually hardly got a chance to use my squid jig because the float kept on working so good. So if you're going to go night time, I suggest maybe put one out under a float. If you're fishing in that sort of under, two metres of water or three metres of water and hang it down about a metre or a metre and a half. Okay? We'll give that a go. Just go and like, you know, if the conditions are right, you just go and have a crack them regardless? Or? Yeah, 100%, mate. Because if the, if, if, it's this time of year, you're going to get them for the next three months, so you've got to go hard where you can. Yeah. So um, at that tide, as I said, if it's high tide, six, six seven, eight, nine at night, or um, six or seven in the morning over on the north wall, or south wall of the seaway, um, I'll give I'll give it a crack either way. I probably would go more along the um, foreshore here, between, around Labrador area or the jetty at Southport, um, if it was night time, uh, rather than the seaway wall. If it was five in the afternoon, I'd do the seaway wall just on dark, um, and definitely in the morning on, on the high tide. Yeah, because okay. uh, they just seem to be, it's, it's easier on the seaway wall. Um, you, get, you lose a lot of jigs, <laughs> simple as that. You can't see the rocks. And, and even counting down, you sort of know how long it takes to sink. It's always like one quarter of a second over and you get stuck on the kanji. Because these things love kanji. And I love kanji too because we sell squid jigs. But um, yeah, <laughs> there must be guys that are diving a lot of squid jigs. Um, but problem. the daytime or morning, just on daylight, you, you've got glass on, you can see it. You can pretty, you've got to watch it. So squidding is a very visual um, sport of fishing. You have to watch that squid jig. Don't take your eyes off it. Okay. Would that be the same as the tweed? Uh, same as the tweed ball, exactly the same. And the further south you go, the better they get it as well. So the Gold Coast is one of those areas that, like, we get, we never used to get many arrow squid. And only the last sort of four years we started getting arrow squid. I, I, maybe we've always been there, but we've always fished for squid. And I'm talking to my customers that know the squid too, um, around structure. And we've learned that the arrow squid don't like structure. They just like out in the middle of the main channel in the deepest part of the channel. That's where they are. So that's maybe why we never caught arrow squid until the last few years. It was only when uh, Chris, uh, not Chris, um, from Brad Smith, um, Clint. Clint, 
Clint started getting them on the ZX40s, 41s, um, vibes, by accident, that we realised they're in the main channel. So thanks for that, Clint. <laughs> that was about probably four or five years ago. And since then, um, we've now nailing them really big time, you know. So maybe they've always been there, I don't know. But they keep coming back and they're, they're in numbers out there at the moment. Yeah. Yes, mate? Come into yeah, they do. They do. So this is the thing. Um, with night time, I use a glow. So um, some of these lures are glow and some aren't. Some are UV. Let's try to find my torch here, guys. Some are UV and some aren't as well. So um, I've got a light here. But if you have a UV light, which is a purple torch, they charge much quicker than, say, a phone light or a torch. They're very, very quick. You just wipe it over it. This one's actually just about got, oh. it's just died. <laughs> oh, here it comes. I don't know if you can see how quick that's charged up. Can you see that? Actually, yeah. so John, may I just flick that light switch there, buddy, just for a sec? Okay, thank you. I just might flick that one uh, just down there, mate, if you can get that. I don't know which one it is. Take, it's a lucky dip. Oh, mate, you nailed it. Get a lot of ticket. <laughs> um, okay, so. If you just run it down there like that, and you can see how quick it charged it up. Can you see that? Yep. So how that quick. It last It'll last for about three to four casts. So it'll run about maybe 10 or 15 yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, this particular color, this was actually, I'll pass this around when, when we turn the lights on. But I just wanted, while I've got the lights off, I'll just show you something with UV. And UV in the last couple of years has been the standout in every type of fishing, whether it be squid, whether it be um, like slow pitch jigging or deep dropping with um, UV line, whatever it might be, uh, it's, we've only learned about in the last few years that it's really, really advantageous to the fishermen to catch more fish, okay? So you can see the little UV on that. That's not glowing, it's just UV. If you can see that there? Yeah. yeah. Um, whether it be just, the, this, this one here is a quite expensive one, but this one has like little legs underneath it, but it's uh, the UV as well. Um, and some just have UV on it. And I'll show you one that doesn't have UV, so you can see the difference that it's not UV, okay? Doesn't glow up. Um, that's, I just hit that the torch down already, it's already glowing. So, as I was saying, if you had a white torch, it doesn't do what, the, what this thing does, what, what a UV light does. Um, yeah, some stuff is super bright, as you can see that there, okay? Oops, <laughs> so, this one's gonna run out of battery. Um, that one, I'm just going to show you this one in a moment. We'll you got this in your bag too, guys. That one there has been like the standout, the standout winner at the moment. So it's glow, but it's got a red head, but in the actual, it looks like it's white. Um, that one we've been selling lots of, and that one's been working probably best. And getting back to colours, um, yeah, thanks for turning that light off. I can turn it back on. Thank you, sir. And thanks, mate. Um, one thing is, um, is every year, I'm not, I'm not trying to upsell you, but the colours do change. So last year, um, I did really well on natural squid colours, like that sort of colour there. I'll pass this around, you can have a look at it. And I did really well on blues, um, like this type of thing. These are really good too. Um, really good on blue colours, and they were the two colours last year that did the best. Um, this year, I've got most of my squid on white, which is like that white and red head, or white, um, like this one here, um, or on red foil. So foil makes a big, big decision as well, mate. So foil means like um, underneath can be like a rainbow foil, it can be a, a red foil, red foil at the moment, it's the, the killer one, um, or it can be gold foil. Um, there's different colour foils. And what I mean by that is I'll pass around a couple here that have that scenario. Put my glasses on. Obviously red, this one's red foil because it's red. <laughs> um, but that's a purple one with red foil. That's that white one I was telling you about that you've got in your bag that's been smacking them at the moment. There's another white one which um, we did really well last year on, and we didn't do many, many well on white last year, but there's one that's white, I've got one here, but you've got one in your bags, I think it's white with a brown natural top on it with a bit of um, pearlescent sort of finish to it. It's really good last year and really good this year as well. Okay. Um, then I'll just pass around a three and a half, so that's as big as you're going to throw for, for the big calamari squid, a three and a half. 
or if you're drifting in the boat and want to put one down the bottom, um, there's the drifter. That's going to be the size because it's got plenty of weight to it. Okay. Um, so two and a half, three and three and a half would be the max for, for calamari squid. For arrow squid, I wouldn't go above two and a half, above three, sorry. Maybe three and a half if you're fishing in a strong current area. Any questions on the size of the squid jigs at all? You're all good? Okay, cool. What about scent? Yeah, scent. Um, so the calamari squid don't mind a bit of scent. Um, my go-to um, is generally in the spray style. Either one of these two, I'll pass these around as well. Um, these smell like tuna roll a little bit. And it's um, Eggy Max and Glow Max. Doesn't glow though, um, but that's those two. Um, and you just, little spray, that's it, that's enough, okay? I only use that on the one that's drifting or sitting under a float. So the one that I'm working on the time, I believe you don't need, um, don't need any scent on it. You don't but, the other. Yeah, I do, I use S-Factor. So, does anyone know what S-Factor is? Yeah. Okay, S-Factor's in a tube, which we can't get until August. <laughs> They've run out. Um, yeah, no, I'm kidding, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> it's a long story. We're trying to get some through another source, but we'll let you know. But um, it's made by it's by from Shimano, and um, it's in a black tube with a big S factor on it. And you just put a smear on your fingers and just wipe down the, the side of the squid jig. Um, I tend to put it more the back half, around the around the prong area, and even wipe it on the prongs. Okay. You didn't put the rag in the boat that you wiped your fingers on, so if you put it on your pants, your wife's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, so, guys, um, the other thing people ask me about is do you tie your line directly to the squid jig or not? Um, I've been using, uh, for the last few years, those quick attach things, which is this thing here. I'll put my glass on, I'll be able to see which way I take it off. It only goes one way, I just pulled the wrong way. Um, so how these things work is they just, they just pop off like that, okay, and they pop on like this. They're very easy. You've got to pack those in your bag. They're very easy, okay? And the beauty of that is when they're not happening, um, you can quickly change to another colour, okay? So really, really quick. I'll actually pass the squid jig around. So um, this is one my wife's been using. She's been out doing me this year. Um, and I've been using the redhead white one and doing really well but she has been out doing it in that colour, but it's a little bit more expensive. I think you do, may have one similar to that in, the, in your kit. And um, that's a uh, Shimano Eggy, Eggy Oil, I think it's called. Um, Eggy Exile Alley, if you say that. <laughs> Sorry, English is not the best. Um, oh, I call it Oil, Silent X. Um, and um, that whole range of those works really well, but that's the only colour I had at the time. But, that, but white seems to be the go this year, as I said. But that one's caught probably about 20 squid. So you can see it's a bit beat up, but I'll keep using it. I actually saw um, one of our customers, my mate Brett Doolan, was out with his dad last weekend. I put his pictures on Facebook last Friday, I think it was. And um, they smashed it. They got like, I don't know, 15 or 20 squid, arrow squid though. Um, and um, his squid jig was just a cheaper one, like one of the really cheap ones. And it only had about one third of it had cloth still on it, the rest is just naked <laughs> from being ripped apart because <laughs> they're aggressive. Um, so um, it's not a necessity to change it because it looks <coughs> ugly. If it's working, keep casting it, that's what I'm going to get at. Okay. Um, Toefish love them, that's right, they do, they bite chunks out actually. Um, uh, my one's an hour ago, it's <laughs> the other way. Oh, does it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually did a. Um, I got a bit, I got a bit you got, got squid? Oh, toadfish. I got the toadfish. Oh, it was oh, it's a big sea toad. Oh, revenge is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, just for the guys that fish offshore, anyone fish offshore and caught a squid at all yet? I've caught some really big squid offshore, not intentionally fishing on, on gang hooks normally. Um, but there is a lot of squid offshore, and if you get that calm day over the next three months, if you do go offshore, and it's blowing westerly and the swell's less than a metre and it's really calm, and, and a glass out. Um, I'd definitely be squidding around the bags of narrow neck, um, around the blocks up that way, and probably um, maybe even the wreck around um, 
uh, uh, some customers with some big ones there, the REC at the Scottish Brits. Okay, so um, and there's a lot of squid out further. I believe we have big squid out in the deep water. And um, one time I was deep dropping, I put a really big squid jig on. It was about a size, I don't know what size, uh, 20 maybe or something. It was around about 30 centimetres long, like chunky like that, weighed about 400 grams. And um, I, I clipped it onto my top of my snap on my rig and I dropped it down just to see if anything would. I was hoping a big squid, and um, I think a squid had a crack at it because it had a perfect um, beak bite mark out of it. Took a chunk about the size of a big bite or an apple out of my squid jig because their teeth are obviously that size are quite big. So I think we do have a big squid out here. Um, we wish we had Humboldt squid or those big red vampire squid. They're fantastic, but we they may be here, but no one's really targeted them, them yet. So when they do, I'll let you guys know. If we do get one, we'll, you'll see all about it. Did you, mate? Were those the red ones, big ones? Uh, pretty big. Yeah, pretty big. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, I think they're here. We just said no one targets them, you know? So um, when you go to Japan and that, they're, they're quite often using like two or three squid jigs on like a Pat Noster rig with still the pound of lead, you know, 16 ounce sinker, and actually running their three squid jigs off their branches and catching big squids, you know, they target them. So something I'll do this year, so I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah. 100%. So around the nine mile, um, on the top, probably, mate. Yeah, I just drift across the top, casting a squid jig. Um, just to make sure you don't get caught in the bottom there. I think it's a bit kelpy there in some areas. Long, long, long weed sort of stuff. But um, we'll definitely hold them. The kelp will hold them for sure. And same at Sevens Reef and off the, the rocks off um, Point Lookout will be the same too. Mm. Give them a go. Um, yeah, so, but... That's probably what I can tell you on the calamari squid. I have caught them, getting back to the boat fishing side of it now, I'll tell you about the boat side of it now. Um, drifting on the same size, I'm actually casting, it's really weird. When you're from the shore, you're casting out, trying to get to the ledge and let it sink down. When you cast from the boat, you're trying to hit the rocks on the rock wall and bring it back out to the deep. Works both ways, okay? Um, as I said, you've got the rock wall, cast up the shallow and, and cast the deep, work both. And when the boat, cast to the rocks or cast along the, up the edge and, and just sort of work it back along the edge, okay? Um, but I've caught them all the way along the rock wall, really good in front of the tower there, let it sink right down about sort of 30 feet and get them all the way down to the bottom. Um, on the run out tide, uh, first hour or two of the run out tide again. Um, I've done really well on the north wall where the um, poo pipes are, I'm going to call them, um, all the way around to where the inlet is pretty well. I've caught them in the inlet there as well. They're still in that corner in the eddy there on the run out tide and run in tide. Um, that's a good spot. Um, north wall of wave break on the upside now, on the north side of it, all the way along from right near the end all the way down to where the six knots boys are at the bottom end of it there. And at the bottom end of it there, there's a few clumps just to the west of the of the end of the wall. I've caught them there. If you're land based from the shore, you could be cast out and work with that area as well. Okay, so are that's you, a really are you good area. Um, I'm drifting or using electric, one of the two. Yeah, just generally drifting. I find drifting with squids better than actually staying stationary. Yeah, and same when I'm on the shore, if I'm walking the shore, I'm like fan casting all the way along as I'm, as I'm walking. Yeah, 100%. Um, and uh, I've got them as well. I don't want to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you. I've got them. <laughs> I can't help myself. Um, the jetties at SeaWorld are pretty good as well. Okay, but you've got to get the right tide there. And when they're there, they're there. Like, you know, pull 20 of the big calamari squid in a session, you know. Yeah, night time and day time. But you've got to get under the, underneath the um, jetty. A lot of ropes there. Okay, sea well's good too. Not in sea well, but on the outside, <laughs> on the jetties. Just doing a slow retrieve? Yeah, doing a slow retrieve. So, good question. How do I, well, I've got the squid jig not on here now, but um, how I'm working is I'm casting it out and um, I'm watching the braid. I always watch the braid, and if I know it's not going to get caught in the rock, I'll let it sink till it goes till it hits the bottom, and then I'll just take up the slack. And generally, my you'll see it on YouTube. But I do two types of lifts. I do one lift, and then a second lift. So when I do that first lift, and then I pause before I come down a bit before I go up. So it's given it time. If it's seen, it's shot over. To, you watch them in the water. You'll see they shoot over to it. They'll look at it, and as soon as you give it that slack, and it falls. They just grab it, and that's 
that two second pause in between the next lift is when they grab it. And you go to lift it and then they're on there. Okay? And sometimes they'll arm, um, if you like flat in front of his head and, and he happens to be out there and it's sinking down, it'll actually grab it on the sink and it'll be right in hard inside of it. Like some, it's got his whole body wrapping around, around it sort of thing. And they're the ones you want because they just don't fall off. And, um, and you go to wind up slack to lift it and they're already on there. You think, oh, I'm a snag. All of a sudden it'll start, uh, it'll start moving on that, you know. Um, so they're, they're there already. But otherwise I just wind up, wind in once I've done the little bit pop up, drop it back down, let it sit a bit and then I'll just sort of do the same deal again and then lift it again and that's it. Rather than just winding it. But as I said before, in shallow water and the water's only this deep here and I'm casting over shallow water, I can't let it hop too much because it's going to get caught in the weed all the time. So I'll sort of count it down and I'll just do a slow wind but every now and then I'm watching trying to see where my, my jig is, especially at night time in the dark and I don't normally see my jig first unless it's glowing I can see it, the glow ones are good, um, but I normally see the shadow following it first before I see this, where the squid is. In that case I'll stop straight away and take the chance to let it sink and it'll always grab it. Okay, yeah. Any questions on that at all? Yes. Right. No, I use it daytime. Yeah, so that white one going around is all chewed up. That's only been daytime this year. You so still far. It up, no, this is sun's enough. It's glowing all the time. Yep. Yep. Squid don't like dirty water. They hate dirty water. So you know that again. I'll tell you that. So in terms of sunlight, I, I did six hours Saturday morning. And that's yes. That silly pod of dolphins work those channel markers. Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. The whole time. They yeah. did not leave. Yeah, they didn't leave. So they're obviously feeding on the squid maybe. They were right? feeding and yeah. I was trying to nick it off them and blue <laughs> Oh, did they? Did you get a squid on, on your no, line? No, no, no. I just kept getting bored because I'd try and go under them. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. And yeah. Had nothing. And so we, it was quite overcast and I was wondering if that made a difference. Um, if it's overcast and like guys use light or use dark, you know, I think on one of the videos we did last year or two years ago with my son Liam, it was really overcast and dark, it was three in the afternoon, but it was like dark. And um, that particular day, um, I ended up using dark to get the silhouette so they could see it against the darkness. Um, but my son Liam, as we go to all the odds, he was using a white colour one and he's, he has done me five to one before I even changed my squid jig and realised that was the colour. <laughs> so, uh, so, no, it's not necessarily that the, the colour's not that important. It's just getting the um, getting the, the right action a little bit. That yeah. might be one my Technique. father in accidentally kicked my UVs over the side. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> okay, that could be the problem. But um, if you've got dolphins around, guys, it's really hard to catch anything. It doesn't matter what sort of fishing you're doing. It's, it's the, they're, the, they're the king when it comes in your area. If you're, in a, you're cut, trying to catch spotted mackerel or whatever and there's fish everywhere, but the dolphins rock up, it's all over. It's just the way it is. So you better off moving to another spot. Mm. We tried the south wall, south wall on wave break, like yep. you said, and just drifted all the way along. Yeah. And just got rainbow runners. <laughs> oh, did you really? Yeah. yeah so I tried this. I did try the south wall, mate. On uh, I went out Sunday afternoon for squid, and um, it was the tide was ready. As the water's dirty, it's like um, more than half out, and we only got three, I think, with my wife. And um, but we tried the uh, south wall of there because it was blowing. Uh, I think it was blowing. Was it blowing northerly? I think it was northwest, west northwest. And um, we drifted the whole along there and got nothing as well. But trying for the calamari, not the arrow squid. Okay. okay. Yeah. But the arrow squid were at the back of wave break on the north side, yeah, which I'll talk about in a moment. <laughs> so yeah. we sat there in about three foot, two to three foot, just on that shallow out. With the, with, the, with the boat's bottom out. Oh, yep. Um, seeing if we could find dark patches and, uh, yeah. No, no luck. Okay, so um, if your boat is able to get in there, um, it's got to be more or less the high tide's about halfway down. Um, where the houseboats are and where that wooden Noah's Ark thing is, um, if you go into that that lagoon at the north western side of Waybreak sort of thing, um, there's really good squid in there. Big, the calamari squid. You don't get arrows there, you don't get calamari. Um, and you'll get them for the next, June's the best. So June's the best month for the calamari squid guys. It's early, but you'll get them now, but because the water's so cold so quick, but uh, June's to go. Yep. Okay. 
Um, any questions on the calamari squid at all? Oh, where to catch them, yeah. Uh, so that's where to catch them. So that's the spot, so I just said. So go, go try there. Um, and just have, when you flatter fish, in the, have a squid jig in your boat ready to go. So Stu and I have, I have one the other day rigged up ready, yeah. but we didn't see any squid, so <laughs> we didn't try, but um, we're too busy catching them flathead. But um, I would suggest that you um, have one in the boat all the time. And if you're land based and you're casting for flatties, I'd still have a squid jig on another rod sitting in a rod tube or a bucket ready to roll in case you see one, follow your squid jig in. Oh, your yeah, uh, soft plastic in or whatever. Okay. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Dug it. Uh, Dug it. <laughs> Wasn't that big, but. Should have been who catches the biggest one all the time. <laughs> uh, there we are. Okay, that's true. <laughs> Actually, I'll tell you a little bit about that, just real quickly, guys, I've got to tell you. So, Stewie says, <laughs> Stewie says, because <laughs> um, I, I had him going hard, I was, I was going to spike five to one or something, Stewie at start. No, it was like six to zero. First. Six to zero, okay. Bad. I didn't want to tell, say that too bad. Yeah. Um, and. <laughs> Stu goes, I think I've lost my flathead mojo. And I was thinking to myself, no, you still got it there, Stu, but I've just got mine back. <laughs> so, sorry, Stu. <laughs> That's right, mate. Gonna, next time, next time's going to be very competitive, unfortunately, because I know what it's like. Hmm. You only beat me by one, and last week we were fishing like 30 knots and pouring and rain, and I beat him by three, so that's all right. That's true. Bad weather. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, so, anyhow, um, we'll go talk about that another time. Hmm. My one was bigger, though. Yeah, so guys, uh, calamari squid, you just got to go hard the next three months and no wind, go squidding. High tide in your favour, land base, seaway, daytime, nighttime, western side. It's as simple as that. Okay. You'll get, you will get them at tell budget around the bridge there as well. You get them, uh, I've caught them around the Chevron Island Bridge and even on the Capri Bridge at night. So they do go right up the river, but they don't go up the canals, not so much. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay, we're now going to branch into um, into the arrow squid. So the arrow squid is um, by far the easiest to catch. Okay, you guys should all catch arrow squid for your next trip out. If you don't, I'll be disappointed. Okay, so <laughs> and please send your photos in if you do. Um, but each week they've gotten more and more of them. Okay, more and more populous, and the areas that I'll do the areas first. So um, I'll start down that end. So the western side, they go about as far as maybe Browns Inlet um, along the. They're all on the western. I'm oh, sorry, western side of Strati. Okay, in the deepest side of Strati. So wherever the main channel's up hard against uh, the island, or wherever you can find a bit of a deep edge along that along that edge. Here. So if you're over near Crab Island, if you know where Crab Island is in the broadwater. And I'll, I'll go through the map later, but um, north of Crab, the channel goes like a big S like that up towards Sovereign, and then it comes back over towards Strati near Browns Inlet. Okay, there's a crossover beacon. Um, and on the edge there, it's like 20 foot deep, and they're all on that edge there as well at times, okay? Um, and then I'll go from there, from Courage, where the houses are, and that little jetty is over on Strati. In front of there is really good. And you're only about probably 100 metres off the bank. All the way up to about um, just past the Courage Campground, where the two green boys are at the front. So those two green boys are is really good around that area as well. Um, and then on the eastern side, on the western side, sorry, um, anywhere from about um, the crossover yellow in front of Ellisey, is it? I think it's Ellisey, yep. which is on the northern end of Ephraim Island. Um, from there, all the way up past Murray Bay Marina all the way up to Shearwater Estate, which is the next canal after Renault Bay Marina. So the canal entrance. Um, there was a rock wall that was there, there's two yellow beacons there. So all the way along that straight, in the middle of the channel, so you've got boats buzzing past you. It is catch the squid though when they're going past you. It doesn't matter, they don't care, the squid don't care. Um, and then you don't get many in front of Renault Bay Canal, but you'll get them again at about Bayview Harbour and they're from Bayview Harbour all the way to pretty well Aqua Building, nearly, or, in front, or just past the boat ramp at the Grand there, and all through that western channel, in the middle of the channel again. It has to be the deepest part of the channel. So you're in about 10 foot of water there, 10 to 12 foot, okay? And uh, again, high tide, first two hours to run out, okay? 
Um, if you're land-based, I would dare say you could get them, you'll definitely get a baby harbour off the wall. Um, the, the arrow squids, do you know, at their last year, we've got, we're, before work, it was like quarter past seven, we're back in like quarter to eight, we got 28 or something. Yeah. It was crazy. When they come on, they come on. And um, you just don't miss every cast, you get one. Okay. Um, and then down this end of town, uh, sorry, northern end, yeah, this end, so heading uh, north, uh, south, south, sorry. Um, you'll get them from the Air Sea Rescue, but in the main channel, heading to the seaway, in front of the Air Sea Rescue base, all the way up to uh, pretty well the Gold Coast Bridge, okay, in the middle of the channel. So right in the deep part, in 20 foot of water, in the middle of the channel. I normally, if it's normally blowing west of some type at this time of year, southwest or northwest, so I'll generally start on the green beaker side of the, of the channel and drift across to the red, to the east side. And you just got to watch out. Boats sometimes get a bit annoyed with you because you're just drifting in the middle of the channel. That's the way it is. Um, and then you get them over on the west side of the of opposite there from about um, the swimming pool up to the Southport Pier and a bit further, even further up on the west, all the way up to the bridge actually nearly, on the west side there but it needs to be in the deepest part of that west side, so 10 or 12 foot of water, okay? And uh, again, high tide, first two hours of running. So there's plenty of areas to fish, there's enough for them. When, when they're on and people know about it, there's probably maybe up to 20 boats in an area about the size of five football fields, but there's enough room, everyone's catching them. But there's that many squid, when they come in, they come in, okay? Um, night time, there's one of the only difference between calamari squid and arrow squid is when you see them all on, on TV, they catch them all at night time on those big ships with the lights on. Um, but in the broad water, they don't seem to uh, squid as good at night as day. I get a lot more during the day than I do at night. And as well as the middle of the day, I still catch a lot more on that tide than I will at night on that tide. So if I do do, do night, I'll generally chase the calamari squid because I don't get as many arrow. I did get a few arrow last two years, uh, but I'm using a um, a green line with a, uh, we sell them, but I'm running out of stock at the moment. <laughs> I'm waiting for more stock to come in. They're about 60 bucks or 70 bucks or something. Um, they're an LED, four-sided LED green light, and they're on a waterproof lead, and you drop it down about two metres. I normally sit underneath the crab pot float and just hang at the back of the boat a bit. They've got about, I think around about three metres of lead on it. Clip it on your battery or put it in a cigarette lighter and drop it back. And I cast just outside of it and bring it back past it. And you'll see the bait come around that. Your bait will start coming around. If you're drifting, say, for more than 10 minutes, you'll have a big bait school around the light and you'll see the squid. And they come around and they sort of, they're real weird. They'll come through over like six or eight arrows and they'll come around the light. They'll come, they'll swim up the front of your boat and they'll disappear out into the black and then all of a sudden they, they're back again. They do loops around the light, but I think they're plucking off the bait fish as they're swimming around past it, um, but they'll take the squid jig as well, okay? Um, sometimes a little bit fussy, and if the bait's small, you may need to go down to a really little squid jig, like a 1.8, that's about, or two, that's about as small as you can get. Uh, they do do smaller, but that's about as small as you want to go. Um, but generally two and a half is enough, okay? Two and a half size. Um, what's the best eating? Best eating? Of the two squid? Um, I like them both. Yeah, I like them both. If I'm going to do the calamari rings, I like the bigger one because all the bigger arrows when they get a bit bigger because they're a little bit thin on the on the side. Um, has anyone tried um, sashimi calamari at all? It's extremely good, extremely good, very sweet and very very safe. I don't know if you know this, but calamari is one of the only ones that don't have a bug, as far as I know, in their body in there. They don't have any bugs, so you can't get sick from them, even raw or anything. And also, um, they're the one of the only ones that you can freeze and they don't get much frostbite compared to other flesh. So they freeze really well forever too. Um, but yeah, no, um, that's my, my preference. The head's the best part, guys. You've got to eat the head. Like, until I met my wife, I used to throw the heads out, use them for jewelry baits or whatever, or snapper. Now, I just throw the eyes out <laughs> the beak. <laughs> so... Uh -huh. So I use not the tentacles, I use the body part yeah. and I cut cut it open so I cut the flap open yeah. um, and then I cut it into like two 
pieces maybe that big and then I um, cut that way and then I cut that way but only scoring it halfway through the flesh and then um, I think I'm going to just see me off or whatever knife and cut it really thin maybe about two mil strips or three mil strips and cut it cut it cut it cut it, cut it, cut it. and then you eat it um, with whatever way with um, chopsticks um, and just soy and a bit of um, whatever you want and um, yeah <laughs> and just dip it in there it is extremely nice like you have to try it yeah yes Yeah, so that's true. So um, when you see squid that's like been photographed and it looks like, I've actually got one of our photographs, so I put all those on ice today, and my wife said, they look like you've had them in the boat for three days. I go, I only caught them this morning, but they've been on ice. It, it sort of draws them out. I don't know what it does, but I'm not sure, but it makes them look like three days old. Um, I prefer, I use, I do sometimes, I don't do the karate chop thing in the back. Some guys do. I'll pass this around. This is actually a little, a little, spike that you would, as soon as you spike them they just go white colour and they die straight away. You put it behind their head where the head attaches to the body and in behind the eyes there and they just, it's an icky spike like you do with fish and the, the quality is much better and um, like years ago I didn't know how to cook squid properly and I probably overcooked it and it was always very very tough okay and um, but I've learned now my wife told me, <laughs> is when you cook it, whether it be, um, if you're going to cook it in breadcrumbs or something like that, um, you need to use um, potato starch and not flour, because flour will it'll come off it. So use potato starch, okay? And, and roll in that. And if you want to get a really nice taste, a nice Japanese, a Japanese style, is you um, cut into the rings, whatever, whatever you want to cook it in, and you marinate it uh, in um, soy and ginger with a bit of garlic as well and marinate it for a few hours or overnight and then uh, then just fluff it in the um, potato starch and then quickly fry it and make sure the oil is quite hot and it's very quick I mean like less than a minute it's cooked less than one minute both sides is it and it's done kiwi, fruit. okay. kiwi fruit's really good too so if you've got those real big ones and you're worried about being tough they normally never after you do it right um, yeah, if you get kiwi fruit and mush it all up, get as juicy as you can, put it in a blender and then um, put the cut up calamari in there, it's really good mate. Mm. It's probably the best actually, pawpaw is meant to be right too, I've never tried pawpaw though. Tapioca works just like potato. Does it? So does it really? Okay, I've never tried that yet. Tapioca flour. Yeah, the, oh flour, okay, yeah right, that's the same as a uh, potato starch. Same as a potato starch. Yeah, okay. Um, in terms of cleaning, yeah, okay. there's, there's been a number of people who've, who've talked about you get your net bag. Yeah, exactly right. I'm going to talk about out, that in a minute. Take out the yard, you <laughs> yeah. slide it, get a hole on yeah. your tube into the bag and run it at six knots through your wash. Yeah, I, I actually put the whole lot in there because it, it does rip up the heads a bit, um, but it cleans everything out. So, um, so do you actually I just put them in the end of them? Oh, no, I don't. I just put them in a hole, actually. Put them in a hole? Yeah, but okay. it cleans out all the ink. There's no ink in there at all. Very, very rarely even the big squid, um, but I'll top on a boat for maybe 400 metres. So you can buy like tumbler ones, we have them downstairs, there's some expensive ones, there's cheaper ones. Always use a scalar bag. Um, and the tumbler bag has like rings in it so that it's quite, it's three dimensional all the time. And it has a floater on it and, um, and quite heavy rope and you throw it on the boat maybe about six or eight metres back on the first wave and it bounces around that first wave. It surfs the first wave but it's rolling on us all the time. And uh, it just cleans up as you say, mate, and it's incredible. And um, I, I pull it back in after I've gone maybe a kilometre or half a k, at, say 15 knots or 20 knots, not too fast, maybe 15 knots. And um, I pull it in, and they're like they're done. I do is take the head off and cut the, the beak out, and it's pretty well everything's cleaned out. So you can just you can just spike them mm. in the bag. That's it. Okay, and yeah, that's it. Awesome. They're pretty well cleaned. Right. Yep, yep. Give it a crack, but it, but take the heads off will probably work better, mate. If you want to give that a go too. Yeah, no, it yeah. Well, rips the eyes out, does it? Yeah. Make a, make a, uh, you know, an inlet and yeah. And come up so when I do the arrow squid, um, if I don't do that method, I get home and clean them. Um, I, what I do is I got like a broom handle, a bit a bit thinner down, maybe about 
like a, a maybe 12 mil half inch uh, wood with a, with a not a pointy end but a, a rounded end on it, otherwise it goes through the squid. And so you take the head off, you cut the fins and that peels off all the skin and then you just get this and push it up it from the other end, from, re, from the point end, reverse it and it comes up the other way and just peel off the bits of soft stuff around it and it's done. It's very quick. Yeah, so it's a bit of wood dowel. Yep. Yeah. And um, the calamari squid, they have a very big ink sack. So if you erupt, uh, break that whilst you're cleaning it, it's like black everywhere. Okay. Uh, so arrow squid have a, l a lot smaller, it's still there, but a lot smaller ink sack. And when you're a squidding, the arrow squid still get you, but very rarely, no, mainly squirt water. But the calamari squid only squirt lots of black ink. Okay, has anyone ever caught a big cuttlefish offshore here at all? They're the ultimate squirters, they're <laughs> bad. So those things, um, they're like this big, like eight kilos or 10 kilo, and the head's on like that. And when they squirt their ink, they're very good at aiming. They can squirt like six metres away or five metres away. They get you, the whole boat gets you. It gets the whole boat. One, it's like a big, someone throw a 20 litre bucket of water. Really bad. But anyhow, we don't get many calamari, I mean, yeah, cuttlefish in, in the brawl. We get little ones, but you don't get big ones. So just be careful to get a big one sure, but they're really good to eat the orange colour. Okay. Um, so getting back to the arrow squid. So a uh, few things you need to know, obviously, is no wind is the best. Um, if you're casting, if, you, if you've got the tide running out, the first day of the run out, still clean water, and, but you've got to suddenly blow on you against the, the wind sort of thing, um, what you need, oh, sorry, against the tide, you need to cast up current as far as you can cast up current, okay? Because that line, you'll sit, you'll make no ground going against the wind. Does that make sense? You're going to sit there, the boat's going to that, but the current's going to come ripping towards you. So if you cast it out to the side, because it's so light, you just won't make contact to the bottom. It's like, like flat air fishing. So you need to cast you know, straight horizontal in front of you, and this is in a boat, guys, and, and hop it back towards you um, with the current. Um, but if you've got um, wind and current together, you try and cast horizontal, and because you're drifting quite fast, and you bring it back with you that way, if that makes sense. Okay, you've got to learn that the squid jig has to make contact at the bottom all the time, or near the bottom. Is that all right? Okay. In that case, do you need to add extra weight? Um, it, yeah, like I, sometimes I wish I could put a ball sinker on or something, but I just don't get the squid. They, they know it's, it doesn't look like a prawn, I guess, or something. Yeah. So no, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. I have tried um, when I when I'm drifting like this style here with the two sorry the other ones the two squid jigs. Thanks, Drew. Yeah, what it is. <laughs> that's right, Drew. Um, I have tried using a Pat Noster and running a, one squid jig off above it, and it's only using a two ounce um, little um, bank sinker or, or snapper lead, and it drags the bottom. It works. Quite, I've caught a lot of squid in that way too, um, but the the bent the little light rods bent over like crazy the whole time. But you'll see them. You'll see them on there. Okay. But guys, with your with your, um, we'll show you a video in a moment. But when you're using uh, when you're in a boat and you're using two squid jigs, two lots of rods, um, you have to work hard and and fast. So you've got to constantly wind in your sleeper one because it gets one bit of weed on it. You, you're wasting time dragging it, and you're not even knowing there's weed on there or not. So you've got to check it constantly. So if you don't get a squid within two minutes, you wind it up. You check for weed, take a bit of weed off it, or whoever's got caught on it while it's drifting, and throw it back out again. In the interim, you're up, you've just thrown the other one out while it's sinking. You do that quickly, okay? And then you place that one in there, and then you grab this one and do like I said before, and see if there's one on there. If there's not one on there, do the hop up and drop it back down again. Would you do the float, the float catch it for the arrow squid as well? Um, look, I, they're on the <coughs> bottom. They're, I've never seen them mid water. They're right down the deepest part of the channel, or on the edge of the channel, but quite deep. So, uh, if you're in, if it, if the sand's like five foot, the water's five foot deep, and it drops down the ten to the channel on the western side, they're on that edge or in the middle of it. Um, and if you're in the deep side or on the eastern side on the main channel of the broad water, um, and it drops from sort of eight down to twenty, they'll be on that edge or or in the twenty in the middle of the channel. Um, so I don't think a float will work. No. Calamari squid. Yep. Um, what else can I tell you? Any questions at all so far, guys? 
no. back to when you catch them. Yes. Like, say, straight in the bucket, no ice, no... Yeah, so, that, yeah, I've done that before. Because it's winter, it's not as hot, so it's not... Like, if it was doing that summer, I would never do that. But in winter, and mostly squid fishing is pretty short, like, you've only got a two-hour window at the tide, so it's not really going to be in the heat too long. Um, and, you know, if you want to humanely kill them, I'd probably put them on ice, but they don't look as good, but they still are as good. Some people say, I don't know when they asked about the ice before, some people do say if you put them on ice straight away, they do go a bit hard. Um, I don't know if I've ever experienced that, but it's a possibility. Um, you're better off spiking them and then put them in, I mean, in a live well or a whatever. If you put them in a live well live, this is how dangerous they are. I mean, one time I caught some yakkers, um, I was going to get drew fish in the night, this same time last year I was going to get drew fish at night time. And so I got some yakkers, come back in. I was right to have a squid, got quite a few arrow squid, just kept on throwing with the liveys. I got back and my liveys are all eaten in half and eaten. They didn't know, even though they're in a little environment that's big, they didn't care, they just kept eating. Amazing. I, that's why I just understand how aggressive they are, you know. So, or they ate each other. And if the squid are really on and you've got two of you in the boat or off on the shore pulling them in, um, if, you leave, if you get one on your, on your floater, one, at least your, your sinking line that's dragging the bottom on its own, and leave it on there for, for more than a, maybe a minute, you bring it up and it's got chunks out everywhere where his mates have got him. Yeah, sorry. So when you're going to spike, because it sounds like your methodology is bring in, spike, kill tank next, and so on. Correct. Uh, how are you holding the squid? I put, on my, I put on my bait board and just go like that. Okay. Yeah, behind so the eyes. Yep. The Correct, oh. yeah. And they go instant white colour. Some guys put on there and go, Karate chop, I don't know if you've ever seen that before. On the back of the head. And they, it works the same pretty well. Can you but, just cut the head off? Uh, you could, but I don't know if it's the best thing for the squid. But, <laughs> but no, mate, you're going to eat it anyhow, so it doesn't make any difference, right? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Rip it off you, I'm like, sorry. <laughs> but no, uh, look, you've got to be humane to them. So I, I prefer to use the, the, the thing, or, or I put them in the live well and let them swim around. I'll do it after I get home. The hard things to catch, you've got to use a little bait net. Yeah. The other thing too is netting squid. So I was getting back before earlier, the biggest squid I didn't mention it, but if you've got a net, something, um, a net with squids like nearly, you have to have one when they get a bit bigger because the chances are, as I said, they'll break off. Even the arrow squid in about, say, uh, July, most of them are, are quite big. I mean, like, they're, they're big. They're like, some of that big, you know, like the, the white 20 litre bucket. I've had them actually put them in there and they stick out the top and bend over. They're like, I don't know, the body size is big, huge. Um, so when you go to lift them out, they're a kilo and they will snap that, that candle one if it's, that's what you got on the squid jig. So you need to net them or try and grab them or something. It's hard to grab them except they, they shoot off. Um, but just make sure you've got a net that's um, fine because if you get little ones, you've got the big hole net, he's going to go straight through it, okay? So use a fine net. Um, what else did I tell you? I think that's probably about it, Stewie. Yeah. I think, is there anything else besides we do the pictures with Masako when she comes out? Um, I'll go through this with you guys and show you on the map where to go. And then um, I'll tell you a couple of secret recipes for squid. So, did most of you guys, how, how many people just fry the squid? Stick your hand up, only just only fry. Okay, so, um, yeah, okay, so I'd start to learn to do like, um, if you don't mind me telling you. Um, how to do like uh, stir fry and very, very quick. So you need to actually have your sauce and your vegetables done first and then you throw in the squid last because they're really quick to cook. And, um, and I'll be definitely using garlic, chilli and, and ginger a lot. Okay, and if you've got any um, basil, basil's really good. Yeah. How you go, Dave? <laughs> and my wife does this recipe. How do you, how do, you do that? I've got to ask you, Dave. How do you do the squid with the um, butter and soy? How do you do that one, like we had the other night? Yeah. So, yeah. Can you tell them how to do it? <laughs> She's shy. Yeah. Entree? Uh, that's entree, yeah, that's right. Could have brought some. Should have, yeah. Wouldn't be enough. <laughs> Sorry, no. You'd love it. You'd want to eat the whole lot. So how do you do it? Tell us, tell me. <laughs> secret, <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> so butter? Butter. Yep, soy. Fry with a very hot fry pan. 
Yep. Put the uh, space. Yep. Make sure you cut the, the angle one. Yeah, 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 yep. And you put the strip. Yes. And take out the box. Yep. And you put in some veggie, whatever you like. Sauce, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegetable. Yeah, vegetable, yep. Yeah. Then put back the soy uh, strip. Yep. And soy sauce. That's it. And soy sauce. And what's the best vegetable? Broccoli. Maybe the garlic. Oh, garlic shallots are really good. Yeah, so garlic shoot or shallots are called, the little skinny ones. Um, yeah, so butter, yeah, butter and mushroom cut up as well. So, um, like I said before, scour the, um, the flesh um, both ways, like that way and that way. Only half the thickness is the secret though. And then cut it into squares about that size, sort of thing, about that size. And then um, quickly cook it in butter and take it out and then do your your garlic shallots and mushrooms real quick, cook them up as well. And then put the squid back in there for a bit of soy and like it's maybe another, not even a minute, 30 seconds, but real quick. It's a secret's quickness. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It is so good. So good. That's why I have to catch like 10 squid every time I go out. The last one, one meal. But sashimi, give the sashimi a go guys. It's really nice. Maybe ceviche as well. Sorry, mate. Maybe you can do like a ceviche. Yeah, so you probably could. It would, we do. We do. <coughs> we do with the, cook it with the vinegar. Is it vinegar? Lemon. Um, uh, sorry? Squid yeah. Yeah. How do you do that? Do you reckon it overcooked with ceviche? She does, Masako does the best squid salad. <laughs> but she doesn't want to tell us. <laughs> Matt, she's going to point at the map. <laughs> I'll try and get out of it in a minute, guys. So, okay, we'll get back to here. So... For the lamb-based guys that are here, um, thanks for okay. um, This is this is about where I work. work this is about where the tower is here. On the, this is on your map, okay? You got it in your bag, and you go right around to where the rocks end. So you, you just fish that whole area, which you can start on the um, probably the um, top of the tide, say. And I always start here because I'm casting on an angle up into the current. So I'm working my way from here around to here, which is about a K now, 600 metres or something. Okay. Um, I do have a habit though, I, I used to I used to, to drive this way, then I drive this way. But before we could drive this way, I used to drive down here, there's two signs there. I used to put, I always used to catch a couple of the signs before I went back down there and worked my way back around on the high tide, but um, I'd probably just start here and work my way around. Um, there's some areas that the rocks are out of fairway, just under the water, they're pain. That's back around the tower area. But once you get to about where the first dive platform is over here, um, it gets quite good all the way around then. Okay. But there's a lot of squid here. Um, also land base, as I said before, from Chara Seafood all the way up to Aqua Building. And then off the jetty at um, Southport, which is here, down to the pool, along, you'll catch Arrow squid, like I'm fishing from my boat, only about 40 metres off the um, off the sand here, and where the swimming pool enclosure is as well, that um, sort of roped off area, um, around that as well. So you should be able to cast from the shoreline there as well. Um, the bridges, um, I've caught at night time both sides of the bridges over time, and I believe now, I haven't tried there yet, but where the super yachts pull in right on the on the road side of the marina there at Southport. Um, I reckon the big lights there and that rock wall's got to be a goer, the squid. Does um, the moon come into it? Yeah, moon does come into effect. So my best, um, for Calamari squid, my best nights ever have been on the full moon, 100%. Maybe a couple of nights before, a couple of nights after. Yes, mate? Does moon phase affect the day time? Tide times is more important. Yeah, tide time. If you get that tide, um, and like I said, at seven, eight, nine, six, seven, eight, nine in the morning, and fish till maybe eleven, like two hours after on the high tide, definitely the go. So that's um, actually coming up this Sunday. I think it's about five thirty-six high tide, maybe yeah, afternoon. Yeah. So after. it's not, last weekend was a good tides. So you'll have to wait till probably you maybe give it go Sunday afternoon or Sunday morning early, um, but definitely like Tuesday, Wednesday ne next week could be good. Um, okay, if you're in a boat, um, both sides of wave break, obviously, like I said before, um, 
I've caught them in around where the right where the um, boat ramp is here, where the yellow sign is there. There's a little sign there. Um, I've caught them around that sign, around where the yachts are, and then all the way down the main channel. As I said, go to the green side, drift across to the red with the westerly wind, um, all the way up to pretty well near the bridge. And um, over here, there's a lot of areas over here in front of the pool, all the way through to the channel from the pool, uh, from the um, the Southport Pier all the way to the main channel, you can do a drift all the way there. It's about four metres to six metres deep, most of that area. That's quite good. The boat ramp is at, uh, down here somewhere. Oh, sorry, that's, I think that's Nev Howes there. So it's just about here somewhere, yeah. Yeah. That's Lotus Creek here. And then on the northern end of town, um, land-based Baby Harbour area is good. And I reckon you'd get it because I'm fishing in only about 30 metres from the shoreline here uh, where the rock wall ends at Bigger Creek and it comes around and starts to sand, which goes down the Charis, Charis Seafood. Um, on that corner of that rock there, if you can cast out 30 metres, you'll catch arrows with their daytime and high tide because I'm only 30 metres off the shoreline. You know, I can cast and hit the sand. So um, it's quite deep on the edge there, especially get it near the Red Beacon. It's really deep there, real close. They'll be all through that area. And then the next area um, is going to be down um, back here where the boat ramp is at the Grand. Um, you'll be able to reach. I, I've caught quite a few there. Last year at night time I went down and got some there. Um, at night, I've got arrows good at night from the, from the shoreline there. Okay, casting off the pontoon at the, at the boat ramp and off the shoreline. Okay. Um, so drifting over here, as I said, um, Karaji, where the houses are, that's where the jetty is there all the way down in front of the, up to Karaji Campground, which is here. Uh, all that way in that main channel there. And on the western side, as I said, um, from, that's the marina here at Runaway Bay, just past it and near Salacia Waters, all the way down to that uh, first canal, that's called Shearwater Estate. Down to that Shearwater Estate, canal's really good. And obviously, Baby Harbour, down to that where I said before, there. And I've also caught them in the channel where all the boats anchor up on the north side of wave break, just drifting through the boats. That's really good too. Is there any questions on that at all, guys? What about up north? Up north, uh, yeah, I haven't got a map here, but, <laughs> but uh, our jumping pin area. I, yeah, okay, so look, I'd be definitely trying, um, they're going to be more around the weed beds. Yep. Yeah, so I'd be trying all around, or like I said, I caught them around Pandanus Island near, near yeah. the bedroom there, in that little channel. Um, I've caught arrow squid, I was telling the the other day, um, the west side, west side. Oh, east, oh, west side of the Pandanus, yep. yeah, not, not the bedroom side, yeah, yep. um, and you know that drain, that little lagoon in there where you get flatties, that, we can get it there, it's still about six foot deep at low tide, um, I, I haven't really squidded there, but I know that because I've pulled my line sometimes on flatter fishing, I feel them on that let go. They're in there too. Um, but w if you want to catch arrow squid, the only place I call arrow squid in the pin is um, where you go up from the Gold Coast up to Jumping Pin on the main channel, Western Channel, and you get to the point where you either go to Jacob's Well or you go to Jumping Bar. And so if you turn to go to Jumping Pin Bar Way, um, the first red, there's always that big uh, shell bank with the. Um, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, and where the red is, where that little creek goes in opposite the shell bank. Um, the main channel down through there, it's like about six metres deep. I've caught so many there on my squid, on my, on my soft plastics and big arrows too. So that's the spot I'll be drawing. And I reckon I'll be there right now on the high top. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, have you guys caught them there? That's where we catch you. Nah, we got a live bait. That's where we catch you. Oh, is that where you get live bait there? Yeah. And you get squid there? Uh, no, no, not yet. No, they'll be, they'll be there. I oh, see so you want them for Jewies, don't you? Yeah. I know, I know, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to get, if you go down towards Jagged's Way, you're going to be getting calamari, you're not going to be getting arrows. Arrows are going to be in that spot. Yeah, it's yeah. the best spot we by far. Yeah, yeah. We haven't chased them. Okay. We've only gone yeah, if you just drift that channel uh, with squid jigs, you'll catch them. Yeah. Same way, like I said, the arrow squid stuff. The northern face of Crusoe Island. Yep. With that, that drop off. Right yep. There. Yeah, you've got the little bay. Yeah, the so... The classic bay all sort of swarm there. Yeah, we call, we call that... Um, uh, what do we call that bay there? 
on the north side of Bruce. Tank Bank. Tank Bank. Tank Bank. It's called Tank Bank. So, mate, um, no, I never, like, it looks good for squid there. There may be the odd ones there, those clumps of weed out a bit deeper. Yeah. So, it won't be up against the shore. But the problem there is it's really, um, like, uh, scary stuff for them on the north, on that drop off on the north side of Crusoe. Yeah. There's too many dewy sharks, whatever, big flatties yeah. that'll eat them. Um, they're probably not their safe ground. No, that was, that was yeah. the same Saturday morning right in the middle of the seaway. Oh, right. So blokes with the double forks out catching bull sharks in the 50 foot, yeah. in that 50 foot little puddle. Yeah, right, okay, yeah, right, okay. Oh, true. I'm trying to squid there and they're like, oh, I just pulled up bull shark. Well, yeah, that's it. And then you go out to the market and there's dolphins. Yeah, okay, yeah, now you got to get the western blocks where it's a bit, bit more, more their ground. So, yeah, so, just, just tripping along Crusoe there, you sort of think there's got to be something stacked yeah, up there. Yeah, that's right. It's going to be more bait there, though, more bait fish than, than squid. Yeah, you'll need to go, like I said, to the gentleman, um, back around towards heading back home sort of way, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, um, we're tip, between Tipper's Channel and the channel to the broad water, western end of it, that whole area in front there. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay, so from Wally's gutter to the turn off to Jacob's Well or go to Broadwater in that straight. No, I, I call that yeah. the intersection where you come up, you go straight ahead instead of turning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you're onto it. Yeah. And then hit the intersection and yep. go up the bedrooms. Yes. But that's, that's, a, that's, that's a flatty patch. Yeah, that's well, that, they're where the flatties are. That's, that's fine. Yeah, that's how I said, but Clint, he's fishing for flatties with the ZXs and catching squid in the same area. And I'm catching. That area where I told you guys, um, that's one of my good flatty areas, and <coughs> and I catch squid there, but I'm not intentionally fishing for them. So, yep. Mm. Oh, sorry. That's a calamari squid. So that's the north side of the north wall of Waybreak. We get them along there. The tide's fairly high, as you can see. It's only dropped a little tiny bit. You can see that rock there. So um, you just cast along that whole wall. That wall's longer than you think. You get there. It's actually about 300 metres long or 400 metres long. It's quite long. So there's plenty of room there for 10 boats to drift it, you know. Um, you can see how big they are, they've, and they've got the big green eyes. So they're the ones that um, I like to eat for calamari <laughs> in the ring style. But I use the other ones too. Um, that's another <coughs> one there. So the head part, so getting to eating the head part, um, you can see that one's grabbed it right up internal. So that's the ones I said they like bear hug it and they don't let go. So its candles, its long ones that hang down, are actually tucked up in here somewhere. So he's just, he's just hit that one on the fall, and, and I've gone to lift it, and it's already on there. Okay, So that's how you catch them differently. Um, this guy here, um, I don't know how, oh, that's actually an arrow squid, that one, but a big arrow. So, oh no, that's a calamari, sorry, this is a calamari. No, that's arrow. Oh, it is an arrow, is it? Yes, the other one was a big an arrow, arrow too. Was it? Yeah. Just go, yeah, back, go back, go back. See how the flaps, no, that's cal that's, no. No, the flaps only go like a little bit down. That's that calamari. Yeah. Because the flaps go the whole length of the tube. Oh, it could be. Yeah. It's got yeah. green eyes over it. That's a big arrow if it's an arrow. <laughs> okay, that's an arrow. But with the head part, when you eat the head part, um, what you do is obviously you get the head off. The beak's in here. You pop the beak out and the area, um, just this area here like the skull, is the only piece you take out. The rest of it you eat. The, the two long ones that are tucked up in here, the two long ones, um, you cut the where the suck uh, the suction caps are on the end of it. You cut those off because they got they do have they're the only piece that has some sort of perhaps some sort of um, uh, badness to, to eat in them and uh, bacteria is what we're looking for. <laughs> so cut those two, not the whole tentacle, just cut the two ends off. Okay, eat the tentacles best. Um, this part here. Um, when you cut that off, you cut that in half or, or four sections. So you have like three or four legs on each section. It's so good. It's the best part of the squid to eat. You just cut the <coughs> just in front of the eyes, do you? Yes, yeah, just in front of the eyes, more or less, and behind, about right, right, right. There's a big piece of meat at the back which you actually keep to eat. Right. Quite soft. Yeah. Sorry, though. You eat the beef. <coughs> Oh, yeah, take out the teeth, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's like I was saying, no, keep the head part and just take the eyes and teeth out. <laughs> okay, so, oh, sorry. Um, at the back here, mate, right in the back here. Yeah. Yep, at the back. Yep. Just that way. Oh, sorry, no. 
So these are the ones I was talking about that are on ISAT day because I've got the photo to show you. So they look like they're a bit old, but they're actually that morning's catch and they're a bit on ice straight up. But they sort of go a bit rigid, a bit different. Um, but yeah, white, white is red head. You've got one of those in your bag. Um, that's an orange one. That was actually a vibe because we're getting them on vibes too that day. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a uh, arrow squid now. Um, the body's a little bit thinner, but as I was saying before, when you want to cut it, you just sort of either put your thumb and, and slit open on the other side of it, not this side, the, the underside of it, and slit open down along that flap, and then a little whole thing will peel off. Okay. Um, yeah, that one, that one there again hasn't got his long ones out. That's just grabbed it. But I just want to show. I took this part here. See how skinny that is there? So it's nearly snapped off. Even though it's not a real big one. Oh, it's a reasonable size, but that's it's pulled a little bit too hard and it's nearly snapped off. So it was only just hanging there. I want to show. You. That's the part that breaks off when you if you go too hard on them. You can't go too hard on them. Oh, that one there, for Liam. What the deal is on that one. But yeah, arrow squid. Oh, that looks like it's at, um, yeah, Sea World, opposite Sea World, sort of thing, the main channel there. It's quite windy that day, blowing from the north. Um, yeah, so they, they, they fold up their long ones internal, but they do come out. You'll see them come out. That's uh, also at the Sea World. That's a bit better day that day. Your boat doesn't need to be big. We get, we get customers that get them off surf skis paddle boards, stand up paddle boards, whatever you got to get out there, that'll, that'll work, as long as it's not too rough. But like I said, the better the day, the, the more squid you'll catch, okay? That's it, though? Okay. What do you catch when the weather's crap? Um, no, you do boat maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> well, mow the yard, mow the yard. <laughs> that, that'll work, right? <laughs> yeah, I'll go to Charles and buy squid. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I hope you learn a bit, guys. I don't know if there's any questions you want to ask us at all on squidding at all. Everyone's got it down pat. Okay, any other questions you want to know about fishing? Stewie's here. <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, video. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's similar. Oh, well, sorry, I've one question. Someone. Yep. Yeah, so uh, it, it's really weird, like, um, Squid are pretty hardy with the hook in. They don't really die too quick. They're pretty good. As long as you're not obstructing them. So if you hit that, uh, it's one, I always fish a sinker right into the top of the yak or slimies. Yeah, but squid... Yep. No, I run a trace. I, I run a, it's the only, it's the only battle use a trace on. Okay. It, they've got to be able to have a bit of freedom. Yeah. yeah, they don't like it on top of them. And it actually squashes them up, bends yeah. them up. So, so just put the hook in the helmet in the top. Circle hook and um, and run the sink about a metre up the line. Okay. Yeah, just try that. Um, okay, here we are squidding. This is that dark day I was telling you about. Ah, uh, thanks, Tony. So just use the net, scoop them up. So if you think it's well hooked, just grab it and bring it in. So when you get the squid jig out, just push it the opposite way. It'll come straight out most times, okay? Sorry, Stu. So you'll see how I work like two rods here. One's just drifting and one I'm casting. <coughs> so this is up near um, east side of Crab Island, near, near the houses at Karaji. It's about six metres deep there. I change my, my pattern every year. <laughs> if, it, if last year's way is not working, I'll change it to a different technique. But generally it works all the time. <laughs> so you can see we're fairly close to the shoreline there. They're those boys that are in front of the houses there. Mm. And we're just on the edge. The long curve round. 
Uh, this is uh, yeah, the long curve brand on the, on the channel, that's right. There, there's a red just straight across here, so I'm, somewhere. Can you actually see them on sound? No. I've never been able to see them on the sounder yet. Like, there's a lot of stuff on the sounder, whether it's them or not, I don't know. Um, but no. If you've watched this video before, sorry guys. So half nude squid jigs or nude squid jigs, what that means is they don't have the cloth on them. They're just a hard plastic. Okay. Um, and they do work at times too. Yeah, I know. It's a bit like strewing me the other day. This day we're, it's fairly cold, we've got jumpers on. So if it's cold, like if it's under 20, I'm not going to sort of worry about the ice. It's not that important. You can always wet a hessian. Uh, yeah, you could do that. Put a wet rag over them, it's a good idea. Like I always actually normally, that rag there is always wet because they spurt ink on the boat, so I want to get cleaned up as quick again. If you leave it on, it's hard to get off. You'll need to <coughs> use um, um, some other bleach or something to get it off the boat. And that's a tackle got, bag there? Yeah, it's a tackle box, that one. <laughs> We sell those. Oh, actually, we give them away. <laughs> There's one, ta one tackle box we do give away. So that's a new one, but that one didn't work, so I got rid of that. It's a mega bass. It's actually mega expensive too, by the way. But the um, Liam's 19 or, eight or $15 one was out doing it. The $2 ones? Yeah, they'll probably outdo it that day too. Yeah. So the white one on now. White or white or red, it's just so hard to beat. Yeah, so don't leave a long tag on your line, guys. Uh, if you're going to tie it directly, do do a loop knot or do you tie it directly. Still, but tie it directly, I tie a loop knot. 100% I'd leave the tag in too. <laughs> I see. <laughs> looks, like a, looks like a prawn feeler, I reckon. <laughs> The cast before that, I had the tag on. I got rid of it because it didn't catch any, so I put it on now. <laughs> That's right, Stuart. So that was on the floater one, the, the one that's just sitting there. I'm, I'm casting the white one. That one was just, it's a pink one, or orange, pink and red maybe, red foil. It's just sitting there. So you just feel. The weight of you feel the weight, or you feel them pulling. Oh, it does so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the floater one, you let it hit the bottom and then reel it up a bit. Or yeah, that's a good question. If it's weedy, I do, mate. Yes, hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Uh, or if the current's enough that it's going to lift off the bottom, I'll, I'll just leave it off the bottom. So I try and cast it a bit more than the depth. So if it's six meters, I'll cast it maybe seven or eight, and on the angle, it'll be just off the bottom. But if it um, comes up shallow, that's Generally, you get the weed on, you got to take it off. So, little ones we just flip them on. Yeah, too small. Little ones we normally let go. Is, there a, is it legal size? No, it's, it's not. No, but the, nice. when they're on, they're, it doesn't matter. You get one next cast here. Yeah. Uh, we always let the little ones go. I um, That's a good question. Um, they, I believe they follow. If you've got someone's got the line out there all the time, they'll just keep coming with you. But um, the trouble is the current. So if you lock, the whole jig performance is going to be totally different. Yeah, so it may be worth a try, but I don't try it real quickly because you don't want to lose them, lose the, lose the school. Yes. 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 So that it sits flat. Oh, so, so you, you so scrape the lead off a bit? Like yeah, yes, yeah. A little bit of lead the oh, good call. And, and the oh, nice. Out. And they, they go, they bite it? Yeah, no. The other reason for that too, especially with the tigers, if you fish in shallow water, a lot of times you get one on and you get a lot of followers. Correct. And I'll even have a little just hanging on the side of the boat. Uh, yeah. And the followers will grab that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Eagle, I think, I'm oh, not in this video, another one. Same deal, mate. I did the same. I, I, I got one in, and actually, by accident, I just wound another line up. I just sat it in the water. I didn't get time to wind it because the other one's going. It's good on it. 
and then I pulled that one up and it's monster mate jumped on the squid jig that was sitting there like you said same scenario yeah because they're too heavy yes right yeah it's like suspending sort of thing yeah and I've done that before I actually fold, fold down but just to make sure the squid jig if you do and they hold it with a pair of pliers I don't know if you've got the cheaper ones they, they fall out <laughs> the pulls are let out um, but yeah um, Liam's always scared they're going to grab him so he's really <laughs> slow at getting them off right he's going to jump like that that's how you spell it Eggy's oil? I don't know. <laughs> so in, yeah, a lot of places in the world, Eggy's means squid, Cephia means squid. There's all different names for it. We call it squid. Like this day, we got like, I don't know, 18 or something in an hour, you know. When they're on, they're on. That's what I'm saying. This is probably around late June, I'd say. They do move around a bit, but they're, we've learned that they're in that area. Like the, all the marks you've got there in red, that's where they always are now. I haven't found any new places yet. Yeah. The one thing we have done is we've worked our way up towards the Gold Coast Bridge a bit further. So we used to stop at about SeaWorld. Then last year we did in front of the marina. And then now we're up towards... Um, did you? Yeah. Is there... Oh no, probably more than that. Probably a good hour, okay. half hour to an hour. But I'd try. I wouldn't be in the one spot. I might move 300 meters that way or 300 meters that way, <coughs> and do drifts across. I sort of like um, rake it. That makes sense. And keep on working my way down till I find them. Um, so you're pretty but I'll be there to if the tide's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, 100 percent. At this time of the year, and they, they weren't there. Like I've been squidding now for probably six times in the last two months, but only the last two or three weeks that really something show up. And every time I go out, it, there's more, better than the last trip. But if you get out in the middle of the tide, the middle of the run out tide, and the water's a bit dirty, expect to get maybe one or two if you're lucky. Do you use the darker colours if the water's dirty? Um, that. No, it doesn't seem to work any better. That they, they disappear. I don't know where they go. Maybe they just switch off. I don't know where they go. They just don't want to know about it. It's got to be a little bit clear. That doesn't look clear, but it is clear. Yeah. Like, we've been, like, had two 50-foot ribs go either side of us, and the waves are like... And we're, like, pulling in the squid. They don't, they don't care about the channel, right? But you've got to be in the channel. For the for the arrow squid. Sometimes if they're a bit um, on the lift, if they're a bit that second or one doesn't work, I'll do a big lift up quite aggressively because I think if any near it, they see it. And I think you may have in amongst yours um, with the rattles in them. Some have rattles in them, and they're really good. Hear that rattle noise? Um, and rattle noise. If you do that, it's that seems to get them going. Like that. So I'm watching that one all the time. You see my head turn to watch that. My drag's set very light on this one. So after I've done a few jerks, and I believe if there's one following it and you let it sit on the bottom, it always hooks up yeah. if there's one there. So you swap over. So I did, that's what I just did, if you see that. So I checked the other one, let that one sit, lift it up, it's on there. Yes. It's 100%, mate. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but don't. No. Yeah, drop, open your bar alarm up and let it sink. That's exactly right, mate. See, even that one was not too bad. 
Oh, still let it go. So Lee, I'm fishing. Um, the tide's actually coming in now. I don't, I don't, well, maybe it's still high tide. I don't know, but I'm casting that way. <laughs> Must mean it's coming in. I don't know, but Liam's casting back the other way. Sometimes it's the, maybe the tide is right near high. It's slowed right down. So at that point, you'll get them casting right around the whole boat. A small one. So they're like net, like go back a week ago, that's the average size, and we were keeping those, of course. Um, but now we're, when the bigger ones come on, we let it go. So Liam's changed his squid jig now to like that blue and pink one. Yeah, that's it. That's the squid jigs. Thanks, Misako. Okay, getting back to that squid salad. <laughs> Yeah, I'll write down there, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll put it up on our on Facebook, okay? Stewie's cooking. Yeah, Stewie's <laughs> cooking. We actually used to do cooking, didn't we, about 20 years ago? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we did cook up nights, teach you guys how to cook. I oh, know you probably know how to cook, but our way. Okay, um, any questions at all, folks? Yes? Within regards to the size, would your big calamari squid take the smaller? 100%, mate, yep. Especially if they're feeding on bait, like little uh, white bait or whatever's around the area. Um, if they're big herrings, you might want to up the size. Yeah. But if it's little, uh, it's like any fishing, it match what you, what you can see. Yeah, but two and a half or, or three is always a, a given go off. Yeah, and as I said the little ones sometimes they're a bit fussy. Um, and for the bigger squid, if there's a lot of current or deeper water, you get a bigger size. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions at all, folks? Everyone's good? Okay, 25 past, 20 past 8, we'll do the draw. Okay, thanks for coming along. Um, I don't know if you guys are interested, but our next, uh, thanks, I'm so good. Our next seminar is on deep dropping, so it's a little bit left field of what we're doing tonight, um, but very popular. Does anyone here deep drop at all? Yeah, a couple of you do. Yeah, so if you've got a boat that's sort of five and a half, six metres or bigger, um, there's a lot, there's a whole new frontier, it's really good. Um, okay, so we've got different methods. I haven't got the little bits of white paper. We've got, we've got a mixed up, things like this. So we're going to draw, so Stewie. Yeah, okay. Now Stewie, what are you going to draw the front row or back row tonight? Don't know, mate. <laughs> Midfield, 14. 14. Well done. So uh, first, we've got 1,300, oh, 1,300 bucks for the prizes tonight. We've got 10 prizes. The first one's about a bit over 400 bucks, and it goes down to about... 20 bucks for the bottom one. So you've got to come grab this, mate. You're welcome to grab that, buddy. I'll pass it down to you. Thanks, Mr. Sucker. Thanks, sir. Good luck. Good on you, matey. Thank you. Cheers, mate. OK, Stewie. Oh, you go. Uh, go next one. OK, it's number oh, down the back a bit. 24. Well done, matey. So I think yours is around 250 bucks or something like that, or a bit under, around that area. Uh, thank you. Come and grab it if you pass it out. Excuse the heads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the next one's around just under 200 bucks. Are you good? Yeah. Okay. But chips. Sorry, guys, at the front. Um, 27. Well done, buddy. That's yours. I'll leave it there for you. Yep, I'll leave the to pass it down, one or two. Um, Okay, the next one I think still around a hundred and something bucks. Thanks for coming along, guys.